In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Yesterday we celebrated St. Paul, the conversion of St. Paul, the Apostle, and today we hear about two other um, uh, bishops in the early church, Timothy and Titus, who were ordained. St. Paul put his hands, imposed hands, and appointed them as overseers, as bishops in the various churches. Let's begin this Mass by asking mercy and forgiveness for all of our sins. Lord, you're sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who adorned Saints Timothy and Titus with apostolic virtues, grant through the intercession of them both that living justly and devoutly in this present age, we may merit to reach our heavenly homeland through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A, begin, a reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, and an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God for whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. I yearn to see you again, recalling your tears, so that I may be filled with joy as I recall your sincere faith that the first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice that I am confident lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through, have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a w spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. The word of the Lord. Do you want me to read the second option? Responsorial Psalm. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to, Lord, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Give to the Lord your families, 
you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you for the laborer deserves his pay. Do not move from one house to another. Whatever town you enter, and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it, and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. A while ago, I think it was probably in the 80s or maybe the 90s, Pope Saint John Paul II said something that I find most people are unaware of. He said, Pope, I'm sorry, we must, now notice he used the word must, that's the imperative in English. He didn't say we ought to. He didn't say we should. We must rediscover in our day our New Testament origins. And ever since I read that, I've thought a lot about it. I'm not an expert on the subject, but I thought a lot about it. Because in our readings yesterday, we had an example, a classic example, of a New Testament origin in the story of St. Paul's conversion. And of course, you do remember what we heard yesterday. There he is on the road to Damascus, a Pharisee's Pharisee. He hated the name of Jesus and he hated the followers of Jesus. The church at that point is a Jewish community. They haven't reached out yet to the Gentile world. And he's on his way to root it out, to destroy it, and to destroy the name of Jesus. They were the followers of Jesus, and his mind at that time were what we would call today a cult that had broken out in Judaism. And he's on his way. It's always been interesting to me that many people 
If you ask them, how was, what color was Paul's horse? And they remember a painting they've seen at one time or another, I've seen it, that shows a horse rearing up when it describes that scene, and portrays that scene. There's no horse mentioned in the story, but everybody thinks there was, or many people think there was. Oh yeah, he was riding a horse. Then if I'm using this story, I usually say, well, what color was the horse? Was it white? Was it black? Was it a pinto? Oh, I don't know, it was just a horse. We don't know how he was on the road. Was he walking? Was he riding? Was he in a cart or chariot or whatever? We don't know. Probably in a caravan of some kind. Probably walking. But he had a powerful, life-changing encounter with the risen Christ and the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit that utterly changed his life. And he became a great champion of Jesus, a great foundational body for, for the future church and his writings and his teaching. But it was a powerful encounter. And we're supposed to rediscover that kind of thing in our day. And it raises the question, what is your or what was your encounter, what is your encounter with Christ, with the Holy Spirit? How has it affected your life? Was it a gentle, quiet encounter, sort of gradually unfolding in your life? That's perfectly valid, because it's in the Old Testament, it's also in the New Testament, and it's in the testimony of the saints. Or was it a powerful, life-changing encounter right on the spot? That's perfectly valid because it's in the Old Testament, the New Testament. Paul is an example of that and in the testimony of the saints. In our first reading today, we have the story of Timothy and Titus. And Paul says something to them that's worth thinking about. <clears throat> and this is where he says, stir into flame the gift you have received. Now the footnote, <clears throat> when I lay my hands on you, when the, the footnote in the New American Bible that I use uh, points out, always read the footnotes, <laughs> points out that Paul was talking about the ecclesial office to which Timothy had been raised when Paul laid his hands on him. And then it refers you to a footnote in 1 Timothy where Paul talks about the laying on of his hands, etc., and then explains that that was what was done in the Old Testament when prophets and kings and priests were raised up to serve the community, hands were laid on them conferring the office, etc. And that became, for the early church, what we now understand as ordination. The laying on of hands. But it's that phrase, stir into flame the gift you have received. Maybe Paul was talking about his office as a bishop, but maybe Paul was also talking about what he says in the next verse. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. The New Testament Greek word for power is dunamis, D-U-N-A-M-I-S, and it means power, but it means a special kind of power, a life-changing kind of power. And it happens to be the root word for our English word dynamite. I hope you find that interesting. This is life-changing power. And he tells Timothy to stir it into flame. Not just his ordination to be a bishop, but also that spirit that he had been filled with. And the intent of Paul is that when we read this and we hear this, it lead us to think about our encounter with Christ. 
Paul never forgot that moment of encounter on the road to Damascus. We know that because on at least two occasions, later on in the Acts of the Apostles, when Paul is giving what we would call today his testimony, he takes his audience back. This is where it all began for me. And he captures it in a fragment of a sentence in his letter to the Galatians, where he says, the one who set me apart, the time came when the one who set me apart from my mother's womb chose to reveal his son. And the rest is history. So that I could go on to proclaim the good news to the Gentiles. He's talking about that encounter. I would encourage all of us, myself included, to think about our encounter with Christ, to think about what we have been given with the Spirit, to reflect on those encounters, whatever they are, however they came to us, and to stir them into flame. Never forget them, especially when it comes to the Spirit. And I think about this because I was raised in a parochial school environment as a kid. I went to four years of high school seminary. I never heard anybody talk about this at the time. It wasn't until I had a powerful life-changing encounter with Christ. That's when I discovered what they told me isn't exactly true. Because what they told me in those days was, this is only the stuff of priests and nuns and great saints. Not ordinary, average lay people. We're not supposed to talk like this. We're not supposed to have these kinds of experiences. And along comes Pope St. John Paul II in our lifetime, who said we must rediscover in our day our New Testament origins. So I encourage all of us, whatever our encounter with Christ was or is, and I don't think it's a once-only experience. I think God tries to encounter us every day. And those encounters should take us deeper and deeper into our walk, deeper and deeper into life in the Spirit, deeper and deeper into a life of discipleship, following after Jesus wherever he leads. And you don't have to be ordained to do this. You can be a mom, a dad, a husband, a wife, a grandma, a grandpa. You still call to follow after Jesus wherever he leads. What is your testimony? In the responsorial psalm, we heard those beautiful words, Announce his salvation day after day. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. But if we don't know, if we don't know what his marvelous deeds are, what do we have to proclaim in light of the song? We have good news to share with that world out there that's desperately in need of hearing what we have to share with them. But most Catholics, maybe not you, but most Catholics, I, heard, I learned this when I was in religious education in Minnesota 40 years ago, are notoriously shy when it comes to share their faith. And that's why it's important to know that we have been sent. Just like Paul says, I was sent by Christ. You and I have been sent by Christ. So we start here at the altar. I've said this many times. We start here at the altar. We eat his body, drink his blood, food for our journey, and then we're sent from the altar out into that world every single day. What is your testimony based on your encounter with Christ? And if you're not aware of your encounter with Christ, that might be a sign that you should pray. We should pray for the Lord to touch you with his Holy Spirit, to open your eyes, your ears, and your heart to the God who loves you so much, he wants to walk with you.
and talk with you and empower you and inspire you. And I have found in my experience, if you take this seriously, if you take seriously the life of active discipleship, you never know who's going to cross your path at any given time. You never know what opportunity is going to be presented to you to share the good news. That's the adventure of authentic Christianity. So think about these things. Reflect on them. Maybe ask yourself, what has God done in my life that I can point to and give a testimony to? God bless you. Let us stand and pray for our Pope and bishops, priests, deacons, ordained ministers that as St. Paul uh, says, that they may not have a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and love and self-control, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who suffer most because of persecution and because of violence, war, poverty, and famine, that they will be comforted and um, consoled, especially by good Christian and Catholic people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, and we pray for all those who have died. We pray especially for our loved ones. And in this Mass, we pray for a special intention for the healing of Andrew Cisneros. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father, hear these prayers offered at the altar of Christ our Lord, who lives forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, which we bring in celebration of Saints Timothy and Titus. And in your loving kindness, render us fully acceptable by giving us sincerity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saints Timothy and Titus, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of their holy lives. Teach us by their words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to their prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hmm. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing this sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Timothy and Titus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people 
you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called for the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amazing grace. <clears throat> 
Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel. I am with you always, says the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, nourish in us that faith taught by the preaching of the apostles and kept safe by the labors of Saints Timothy and Titus through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't miss the show tonight. Tonight we have a theatrical performance, a theater play, a cultural event in our um, parish hall in the gymnasium, the parish center. It is the Tolton play, um, Tolton from Slave to Priest, about the uh, first black priest in our country who was a slave, escaped slavery, and was raised by his Catholic mother to um, 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 love the Catholic faith, and, and several priests and sisters encouraged him um, and he was able to be ordained in Rome and return to America to be the first priest, uh, Catholic black priest from our country, uh, ordained as a priest. A very interesting story. His life's being considered for um, canonization. So please um, come to see this, this um, play. At seven o'clock, it's free. Just uh, we'll have a collection, but uh, you're welcome to come. Seven o'clock uh, this evening in our gym. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our okay. Eucharistic celebration is ended, so let us go forth now with love and joy to serve the Lord, one another, and all of those to whom he sends us today. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's go out with number 728. <clears throat> Seek ye first.